Hey everybody, Happy New Year. Uh, this is Matt from Crazy Monkey Midwest Martial Arts. I'm starting a new video blog to start off 2014. And I thought it would be interesting to talk about some different things in the martial arts that I think really don't get talked about enough. Uh, things that will really help you with your training ultimately and uh, will help you get more out of your training, get more benefit out of, out of the training. So, you know, maybe, uh, you know, because it's a new year, maybe your New Year's resolution might be to finally, you know, start training in a martial art, or maybe you've had a layoff from training and you've decided that this is the year I'm going to get back into it, or maybe you've been training all along and training for a long time even. Uh, in any case, I think there are a few questions that are really, really, really important for you to answer if you want to get the most benefit out of your training and not waste your time, your money, or your health uh, and just make sure you're getting you know, the right training in the right environment with the right people, I think you need to answer these questions. The first one and probably the most important one is why. Why do you train? Why do you want to train in a martial art? What are you really looking to get out of it? Uh, because there's so much debate that goes on in the martial arts. And if you're not a martial artist, you'll probably figure this out really quickly. <laughs> that martial artists love to debate things. We love to argue. We love to debate about you know this style versus that style. Uh, this training method versus that training method. This technique, does it work? Does it not work? Uh, street versus sport, competition versus not competition, you know, all these different debates that go on. And ironically, the thing that I find, you know, almost never gets brought up in the context of those debates is why is that particular person training? So what is it that they are actually looking to get out of training in that style or that method or that technique that someone else thinks is a waste of time? Uh, so I think it's really important to understand for yourself, why do you want to train and, and what do you hope to get out of martial art? So, uh, just a, a short list, some kind of some sub bullets, some different things to think about as you're doing the, you know, the work to answer this question for yourself. The first is make sure you dig deep enough and take a good, long, hard look in the mirror when you're answering this question that you're really being honest with yourself about why you train and what you want to get out of training. Uh, for example, you know, it's not uncommon for people to say, well, I train for self-defense. But then you talk to them and you find out that they've never been in a fight. They've never been a victim of crime or anything like that. They've never been in a self-defense situation. Um, and it's, you know, maybe they're, they're not even in under circumstances where it's going to come up very often. Now, far be it from me to tell anybody that, you know, you shouldn't train to, uh, or that you shouldn't learn how to defend yourself. But is that really your primary reason for training? You know, maybe you need to dig a little deeper and really find out what is at the root of that, that, uh, that cause for training. Uh, second point to that is when you do begin to, to figure out what your motivation for training is and what your goals are, make sure that they're your goals. Make sure that it's really what you want to get out of your training and not what someone else wants for you. If and especially if that person is your, you know, your coach, your instructor, your sifu, your guru, sensei, you know, whatever term you use, make sure that your goals are your goals, not their goals. Uh, it's not uncommon. I think it's kind of stems from sort of how we are with our parents oftentimes where someone will set a goal for you and because that person, because you look up to that person, you just take that goal on as your own. When really, if you really examine what's in your heart, you realize that that's not really what I want. So make sure that your goals are your goals and not someone else's. And really the, the mark of a great trainer, one of the marks of a great trainer or a great instructor is that they're going to care about you enough to ask you what your goals are and then they're either going to help you achieve those goals in your training or 
if they don't think they can help you achieve those goals, they'll have the integrity to say, you should look at you know this other program or this other school or this other instructor. <clears throat> I've had this happen a couple times where people uh, come into a class that I'm teaching and they say, well, I wanna compete. I wanna compete in kickboxing. I wanna compete in Muay Thai or I wanna compete in mixed martial arts. And I, I just tell them very quickly, I say, that's not what I do. It's not really what my focus is. I don't train competitive fighters, but I have friends that do, and you should go train with them because they're really great coaches and they can really help you achieve you know, those goals that you have. So uh, something that you should you know, see in a, in a great instructor is you know, if they don't have the knowledge or the uh, desire to take you in a specific direction with your training, then they should have the integrity to tell you that and to maybe offer you an alternative uh, someone else to train with, somewhere else to go. Uh, so that's the first kind of bullet point. Make sure it's what you want and uh, make sure you really are digging deep enough to figure out what you really want to get out of your training. Second thing is understand that your motivation for training is going to very likely change over time. Uh, going back to the, the self-defense issue, uh, you know, it's not uncommon for someone to start training because they want to learn how to defend themselves, but then they train for a year, two years, three years, five, whatever, and they reach a certain point where they feel confident, they feel like they can defend themselves. Now their motivation has changed because if, if they were just looking to continue to train to, uh, for self-defense, they've already achieved that goal. So there must be something else now that's driving them and continuing to, uh, to drive them to, to train. Uh, so your motivation might change a little bit over time. The third point is it's okay to have more than one reason for training. It's okay to have more than one motivation, particularly if you train in multiple arts or multiple programs. So for example, maybe you train in a, a boxing or stand-up kickboxing program, and then you also train in a grappling or Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu program, and maybe you also train in a, a weapon system, you know, Filipino martial arts or something like that. It's okay to have different reasons for training each of those different areas. So maybe one is an area that you really want to compete in, and so it's all about performance. Uh, maybe another is more just for fitness and for health, and then still maybe another area you might train just for enjoyment of it and just fascination and uh, curiosity about you know that particular martial art and it's okay to have multiple motivations uh, or different motivations for training different pieces of the art uh, and the last point is once you have a, a clear understanding of why you train make sure that you honor that by first and foremost make sure you honor that in your training so make sure you train for that reason and then honor it by not letting anyone else judge you for choosing that as your motivation. And even more importantly, not judging yourself for choosing that as your motivation. You know, if you don't want to be a competition fighter, then you shouldn't feel discouraged that that's not what you want. And you shouldn't let anyone else discourage you that, oh, well, why don't you want to compete? You know, it's just, if it's not what you want, it's not what you want. And you should honor, you know, what's in your heart and what's, what your intentions are for training. And my really, just the last point to kind of sum that up is if the only reason you can come up with for training in a martial art or maybe one particular area of martial art is just because it's fun, that is as valid a reason to train as any other reason that you can come up with or anyone else can come up with. That is completely valid a completely valid motivation to continue to train in a martial art. So it's also one of the easiest ways to avoid one of those debates that I was talking about at the beginning, because if someone says, well, why do you bother training in this or that? Or why do you bother doing that particular, you know, training method or whatever that you're doing? And you just say, because it's fun and I love it and I enjoy it. You're probably not going to get any argument out of them. It's not really something that's going to be up for debate. Uh, so that's it for, for this installment of the blog. I hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions or suggestions, you know, you can contact me through uh, my website, crazymonkeymidwest.com. 
there's a contact form there you can fill out and uh, I'll get back to you as quickly as, uh, as I can. So hope you enjoyed it. Again, look out for the next one. And uh, once again, Happy New Year and best of luck to you and your training.